On this week's programme, we bring you the highlights of the first round of the Kerry Agribusiness Irish and Ledger from Limerick and the Sporting Press Irish Oak from Shelburne Park, along with the final of the Hondo Black Puppy Galaxy 525. We head to Kilkenny for the Beam Gala Benefit Night and we also catch up with the Dirty Half Dozen Syndicate. So first, it's all the action from Shelburne Park. It was another busy week at Shelburne Park with the first round of the 74,000 euro Sporting Press Irish Oaks getting underway and also the final of the Hondo Black Puppy Galaxy 525, which took place on Saturday night, offering a winner's prize of 5,000 euro. But to kickstart the night, a draw was held for the Big Fancy Holiday Giveaway, which has been running at participating stadia throughout the country during the last few weeks. The six finalists at Shelburne drew a trap number for the fourth race, and the first dog passed the winning post with the lucky number for one of the competition finalists. Well, unfortunately, the lucky winner of the holiday, not present here tonight, Patricia Griffin, the tote here in Shelburne. First of all, a great competition. Fantastic. It's absolutely super competition. And uh, the format for this uh, draw was different than the previous ones, and uh, it actually created a great atmosphere among the contestants down here, as, as you all saw. So it's, uh, it's uh, been a super, super uh, draw. Now, the winner, Julia Masson. Now, what can Julia expect? A big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Julia couldn't be here with us tonight, and Declan actually drew uh, number three and she now has a choice of going to Hawaii, Dubai, India, Dominican Republic, uh, Euro Disney. So she's got that to look forward to now next week. Lucky person. Very and no, lucky. And no doubt I'm sure she'll buy Declan a present for drawing her name. Well, I, th I think he deserves it. Maybe even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and let's hope Julia Masson has a fantastic holiday. Now let's take a look at some of the highlights of the sporting press, Irish Oaks. Fastest of the opening round came in Heat 5, where Shelley's Crown, racing from Trap 3, ran out a hugely impressive winner. Here behind traps. And they hit the lids, and 3 is the first to show Shelley's Crown. Lady Serena bang there as well, but Shelley's Crown shows the best early to this first bend and opens up by a length. The five dog Hannah's image is bang on the premises in second and six sits third. That's life's lo lovely. Liaise with Lisa is not on the case, sits last about eight lengths off the speed. Up front it's three. Shelley's crown looking for his third win. It's only his fourth outing. It's a classy sort. It's finding another gear. It's gone on by three or four. Five Hannah's image is doing good work in second, but not going to beat this Shelley's crown who does it in style. Five Hannah's image through for second. It's a close thing for third and the time a fantastic 28.62. In Heat 6, one of the outright favourites, Graceland's Pixie, was the hot favourite. She raced in the striped jacket, but number four, O'Dial, was another one fancied in the market. And the way they go, Graceland's Pixie missed the kick up front. Forge Flyer showing some nice early zip here in the white jacket. He leads by two. It's three Forge Flyer, winner of nine races. He leads by two legs. But here's Graceland's Pixie. Found rocket gears there and goes up on the outside. Graceland's Pixie strikes the front, comes from nowhere, leads by a length. Now two. It's Graceland's Pixie opening right up from three Forge Flyer. Now back in second and one. Subtle Buffy back in third. Four Doggo deals back and forth, struggling to qualify, but up to the line. Graceland's Pixie does it in fine style. Six Graceland's Pixie. To your winner, second number three, Forge Flyers, a photo third, and the time a very quick 28.75. On Saturday night, the opening round concluded. Droopy's Gwen raced from trap six in heat 13. She was one of the favourites. Wide open betting contest here behind the traps. A way to go to number one off to a flyer. Karen's late with six Droopy's Gwen showing very good pace going up to challenge into the corner. It's number one Karen's late now being challenged by number six Droopy's Gwen on the outside. And Droopy's Gwen number six goes on out of the second bend from one Karen's late in second. Four links back to number five Tantalan's Girl and number three Black Toast making ground. But around the final bend it's six Droopy's Gwen out front. One Karen's late staying on strongly now number three. Black Toast is back in third. Droopy's runs very wide off the last bend, but she coasts home. A very impressive winner. Number six to winner here, Droopy's Gwen. Second number one, Karen Slate. And third number three, Black Toast. The time, 28.78. In the final heat of the night, there was huge money for number six, Miss Wonderful. She was a hot favourite, but look out for the likes of number four, As for Diamonds, and the reserve in trap three, Santini's Mentor. Here we go, away you go, and it's a level start, but number three, Santini's Mentor is off to a flyer leading up. 
from number four in second ass for Diamonds and six Miss Wonderful around the second bend with number three out front Santini's mentor by two and a half three lengths from four ass for Diamonds and six Miss Wonderful in third but it's number three Santini's mentor the reserve cutting out a strong gallop four ass for Diamonds is closing then comes the favorite six Miss Wonderful and two keys glory in behind but it's number three Santini's mentor out front from the start and going to win this one number three Santini's mentor second is number four ass for Diamonds and third number six Miss Wonderful the time 28 78 and now on to the final of the night the hondo black puppy galaxy 525 Warden Glenwood Tom, owned and trained by Nolene Egan. This is a son of a Pacific Mile in Glenwood Bell, ideally drawn the fence. He's won six from ten and certainly a leading charge here. In two is He's a Duke wearing the blue jacket trained by Paul Kiley for Liam Marks and Dolores Ruth. A sort of top poncho in King Craig Duchess has great speed throughout, goes to a bend, flies down the back and stays. He's won four of his five, was second on the other occasion and for me, the one they have to beat. Next in the white jacket of three is Humor's Lad. Tremba Declan Byrne for Dick Holhen and Carlo, a son of knock even major in Miss Seskin. Good early pace, but has a little bit on his plate here. Next in four is Killock Billy, trained by Georgina Goodall for Anthony Rhodes, a son of Split the Bill in Cathunda Santa, bombed out of traps in the semi-finals for a 28-49 success. If he repeats that start, he'll take all the beating, but not normally a fast starter. In five, we have Manx Charlie, trained by Teresa O'Sullivan for John Guilford, a son of Larkill Joe and classic runner. He's won four of nine, very unlucky in the semi-finals. When balked, when challenging for the lead, he'll be flying home, but may need a little bit of luck. And finally, in trap six, replacing his kennel companion, Kala Honda Show, is Farlow Hondo. This fellow coming in as reserve, trained by Paul Hennessy for Ordron McGettigan, a son of Hondo Black, and Farlow Dingle, good pace throughout, well drawn, but another that might just need a little bit of luck. Here on the way for the final of the Hondo Black Puppy Galaxy 525. It seems that number three, Humor's Lad, has turned in traps. The hair now coming up behind the boxes. The dog's all set, the favourite in trap two. He's a Duke. And away they go, and he's a Duke off to a slow start. There's number one, Glenwood Tom. Leads the bend from four, Killock Billy, but four, Killock Billy leads round the bend. From one, Glenwood Tom. Then comes number two, he's a Duke. Out of the second bend, it's number one, Glenwood Tom. Number four, Killock Billy, and number two, he's a Duke. We have a right battle on our hands. Into the third bend, one, Glenwood Tom, but here comes four, Killock Billy, and two, he's a Duke. It's neck and neck, two. He's a Duke, goes round in front now. Number five, Manx Charlie is finishing fast. Number one, Glenwood Tom, still on the premises, but up the line. It's two, Glen Here's a Duke, here comes one, Glenwood Tom, and five, Manx Charlie is desperately close. One, Glenwood Tom, perhaps, but it's certainly one for the judge. The winning time, 28 98. But at any one stage, four dogs had a serious chance. And after an absolute thriller, the final of the Hondo Black Puppy Galaxy 525 went to trap number five, Manx Charlie, by the smallest of margins, beating number one, Glenwood Tom. Back in third was number two, he's a Duke, and the winning time, 28-98. Well, it certainly brings back memories. Mickey O'Sullivan back here in the winner's enclosure. Mickey, Thanks, well done. Michael. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, it's great to be back. Uh, is, and with a Manx dog as well, after Manx, Manx treasure. That's right. Uh, the owner couldn't be here tonight. He's on holiday, so I just accepted the trophy for him. We didn't, uh, we're just hoping. He's a good pop. What's the plan for this dog now, Mickey? Uh, we'll have a shot at the derby. That's going to be the next time. We'll give him a rest now. He's, he's learning the whole time, so um, we'll have a little shot at the derby. It's nice to see John Guilford back when the winners in the big time. It is, it is nice, a gentleman. Yeah. John couldn't make it tonight either, no? He couldn't make it tonight, he's on holidays. And, um, so he's, uh, he'll be ringing in a second <laughs> to get the result. Well, hopefully yeah. that's a forerunner, Mickey, for many more big successes. Thanks very much, Michael. Thanks. <laughs> Kerry Agri Business Irish St. Ledger got off to a great start with the first round heats on both Thursday and Saturday night. The launch and draw took place at the track last Tuesday morning for the €72,000 Irish St. Ledger Classic. This is the fourth consecutive year for the Kerry Group to sponsor this prestigious event, and John O'Callaghan from Kerry Agri Business was on hand for the photo shoot and was ably assisted by some young greyhound enthusiasts. So now let's take a look at some of the highlights from that first round. In heat two, we had Deerfield Mover running from trap five and Droopy Sammy, very strongly fancied, going from one. Also some support for number three, Hello Thomas. 
And away they go, and two Black Pacific away quite well, but three Hello Thomas is showing some nice early pace here. Five slipping in behind Deerfield Mover. They're around the first couple of ends. Bit of Argy Bargy at the back of the field, and Hello Thomas for Colin Wallace and Glynn has opened up a nice six or seven length advantage here from two Black Pacific, giving heavy chase in second. Five looking for racing room. He's not going to get it. The tree dog Hello Thomas looks to have this heat in the bag. Five and two more Argy Bargy between runners, but the two of them still look likely to qualify, stretching up to the line. Hello Thomas, he spread eagles this field and fine style three hello thomas your winner five deerfield mover back in second one of the main fancies for the ledger is tyre darrell he went into action in heat five running from trap four and went to traps at two to one on favorite his main rival is kennel companion drummer boy in trap one and they hit the lids and four Tyroor Darrell away quite well in the center five Anika Champ is showing some nice pace up on the outside but Tyroor Darrell leads at the first bend opens up by a couple of lengths track him well in second is one drummer boy giving heavy chase in second and three Kikada back in third but he stretched down the back straight and Tyroor Darrell for PJ Fagan count to Galway has opened up a very nice lead here he's round the final couple of bends he's six length advantage over drummer boy in second Tyroor Darrell unlucky in the derby in Wimbledon in the last week or so he's going to win in fine style four Tyroor Darrell your winner it's very close for second between one drummer boy and two up the ball on saturday night in heat seven we had last year's champion never give up returning in action podrick heffernan's dog running from trap five and a strong favorite to oblige here coming up behind traps away they go and number four stumbles rival dice it's the defending champion never give up who's off to a good start but one sarsfield rock now and he is inside but it's number five never give up falls a fraction of the lead over number one sarsfield's rock then comes six honey pound pale but down the far side and the defending champion never give up now increasing his advantage to two and a half lengths but one sarsfield's rock coming back at him then comes six honey pound bale back further is number four rival dice but around the final bend now number five never give up starts to assert up the home straight number five never give up goes on to win it it's close for second one perhaps Sarsfield Rock third number six honey pound bail the clear ledger favorite enchanting hero went in heat nine owned by David Giles this fellow won the consolation last year and was well fancy to get off to a winning start with number six brick and jack and four rambler Sammy also carrying big hopes the hot favorite number two enchanting hero He's out quite well. Oh, he gets squeezed. Number two, Enchanting Hero, the favourite, but showing strength on the run to the bend. It's number two, Enchanting Hero, burst to the front, leads around the corner from number one, Red Barn Panther, who runs wide. Bit of trouble in behind and three, Deal Rovers balked, but down the far side. It's number two, Enchanting Hero, gone on. Four clear from number four, Rambler Sammy in second. Onto the second last bend. This fellow is a powerful stare, Enchanting Hero, and he's maintaining a strong gallop out front, Enchanting Hero. Trey by Reggie Roberts for David Giles. Runs a bit wide off the last, but powers home. The winner of this one, number two, Enchanting to hear the winner from four rambler sammy in second the most eagerly awaited race of the round was heat 10 where number five he said so had a big traveling support but in against him number one border knoll two barefoot maestro and four awesome impact other big names looks one of the hottest heats of the round away to go nice break number five out well he said so leading up with number one the border knoll joined big early pace and number one border knoll around the corner a few lengths in front from number five he said so in second and two barefoot maestro back in third but it's number one border knoll showing big pace here he's gone three three and a half lengths in front from five he said so in second then comes two barefoot maestro and six congo romeo around the final bends and out front it's still number one border knoll they're beginning to close he said so in second coming up strongly in barefoot maestro but it's number one last out border knoll wins it from five he said so in second and two barefoot maestro in third some explosive action there in that opening round of the ledger at limerick the second round will be run next saturday night and the name on most people's lips now is that of tyre darrow so impressive in winning that first round heat Some weeks ago, we met up with the Dirty Half Dozen Syndicate as they collected their dog, Noir's classic from breeder Liam O'Donovan, and delivered him to trainer Eugene Robinson. Well, last week, at Harrods Cross, we went to see Noir's classic in his debut race. All the schooling is finished now, and um, I'm expecting him to run well. Um, he's, he's a dog that stays on well, so if he gets a bit of look and run early on in the race, he should run really well. He's had a couple of trials up to tonight. How did he get on? 
Well, he's been tried against dogs now that have run well in races since, so I'm hoping that he'll, he should run well. I, I like the dog now, and he, he, he stays on well. Um, I'm hoping for a big one. So what is it like for a dog in the first race? I mean, it's very hard to tell what they're going to do, especially when he's in against other puppies. Well, this is it. They can be schooling very well at home, and then when you take them up for their first race, everything is new to them. Kenlan, muzzle, sheet, the crowd. So some dogs don't run very well in their first race, but... And it's, some dogs it takes three or four races, but this fellow now is tough, like, might surprise us all. Ivana, our interest here tonight is Norris Classic, and I see you have him at the 6-4 joint favourite. Yeah, it looks now between the top and bottom. Basically, I'm going by the trainers here because we've no previous form to go by. Both respect the trainers, Eugene Robinson and Tony Byrne. Personally, I would say the six dog would be better bred, and the comrades have shown... One of the comrades of six actually has won four in Shelburne, whereas none of the comrades have ran yet at the top. He's off four weeks. Maybe, you know, in the last four weeks he's improved on the trial form, but in my eyes, six would have the better form. The reason we saw Ali here tonight, that's probably why the top is six to four. He would have been a two to one shot. Well, Ali, you're all here tonight. How are the nerves? Uh, not great. I think we're more nervous than the dog is, I think, at this stage. Um, but um, we're hoping for a good race anyway. It's his first race. We're not expecting a whole lot. So hopefully he, he might come first and be happy enough. Well, we're talking to Yvonne Barry and she has you down at 64, joint favourite. Oh, we may put the money back into the pocket, so <laughs> we may for another night. <laughs> Well, Eugene was saying he's, he's trialled well and he's in good form, so it looks good for you. Yeah, he seems to come on Eugene, I said, it's very happy with him and uh, he seems to be fairly strong and he's coming on progressing nicely. So we'll just see what happens after his first race and we'll take it from there. Well, have there been many meetings between the whole group over tonight? Uh, no, just, I'm just mainly I'm the text person here, I'm texting everybody this day saying we're out the 14th of June and come along. So I haven't really planned anything up to, up to now. <laughs> We'll keep the fingers crossed. They're coming out now, so we'll see how it goes. See how it goes. <laughs> well, the dog's all set for the second race here at Harold's Cross. One is Norris Classic, two View From Above, in three, Liskey Lady, four, Striking Samba, top five, Bar Castle, and then six, we have Rodney's Rumble. The hair up behind traps and away they go, and first to show is trap number three. Liskey Lady leads to the bend from trap number two, View From Above. Back in third spot on the inside, we have the board Norris Classic. We're forced to check at that point. It's number three, Liskey Lady, who leads from two, View From Above. Then comes trap number six, Rodney's Rumble, with back and forth spot number four, Striking Striking Samba down into the penultimate bend. And number three, Liz Key Lady continues to set a strong gallop. Number two now giving way. It's number one, Norris Classic gives chase, but it's number three. Liz Key Lady leads around the final bend. Number six, Rodney's Rumble coming at them. As is number one, Norris Classic coming to the line. Number three, Liz Key Lady wins it. In second, Norris Classic on with the dirty half. Dozen Syndicate in the winning time, 29-43. Well, Ali, he didn't disgrace himself there, that's for sure. No, he didn't. He finished well. He just got a little bit of trouble on the first two corners and on, on, the, on the back straight there. But he came on well. He came on well now. So we're still alive for next day anyway, is the main thing. Well, Eugene was saying he's a fast finisher and he really showed that there tonight. He did, he stayed on well, that's one thing about him. He, I think the little 5-5 five five is just maybe a fraction too short. He's, he's definitely powered home anyway. So when is the next night going to be? Oh, I don't know, we'll have to talk to Eugene about that. So did you all use the shirts here tonight? <laughs> we did, Jay, yeah. But we can't complain, he did well, he ran well enough anyway. And you're having a bit of fun out of him? Exactly, we're having a bit of fun, that's what it's all about. Half the family here, girlfriends, wives are here tonight, so we had a bit of crack, it's just it's all about. I was pleased with that, he, he did get a lot of uh, interference, but he learned an awful lot from that race and he did run on very strong. I see a big future in the dog. So what happens to him now, when does he go out on the track again? Well, he'll, he'll have a bit more schooling now. He, he, he's learnt a lot having that race, and, and uh, about a month's time, we'll give him a couple of more schools. And uh, as I say, he learned an awful lot from that race. Probably the longest running annual benefit meeting was held at Kilkenny Track last Sunday night. It was, of course, the Beam Bagnalls Town Barrow Valley Enterprises for adult members with special needs. This is the 16th consecutive year for this popular event, which raises in excess of €20,000 annually for a very worthy cause. The hard-working committee were delighted with the turnout on the night and believed this to be their bumper year. There was over €30,000 on offer in prize money, and we join Michael now for the final of the Hedge Hunter Novice Hurdle Stake. In one ludicrous, two is group race, three eight and a bit, four make a change, in five purple taxi, and six Coddy and Scale. The favourites in four, that's make a change. 
Here now coming up behind the boxes, away to go. Pretty level start. Four make a change out well. On the inside, number two, group race. Running well to the corner with one ludicrous. Into the bend, three in a line. A bit of bumping. One and two are in a bit of a, a bumping match there in the corner. Three gets through on the inside, eight in a bit. But four, the favourite, make a change. Now hits the front. Jumps a big one there at the second hurdle on the far side. And it's number four, make a change, the favourite. Stretching away, jumping boldly out front. Number two, group race is in second. But up off to the final bend is number four, make a change. He's gone clear in this one. Galloping on, a big jump jump at the last and safely home make a change the easy winner there close for second between Cuddy and Scale and Purple Taxi the result of the hedge hunter novice hurdle the winner number four make a change won by Dennis Barney from Mitchellstown second number six Cuddy and Scale and third number five Purple Taxi the time 30.08 well, we've seen a fine performance of jumping there and novice make a change. Dennis, um, he, did he take straight away to hurdling? He did actually straight away. He was very good over the first time ever. So we said we chance him at it, take a chance. He put in a few very bold jumps there. He did, yeah, he did. He likes to, he likes them holes. What's the plan now with him? Uh, there's no plan. This is the plan, that's that, do you know. Could he develop maybe into an Irish Grand National prospect or will he be gone over water by then? Well, I'd say he'd stay 700, he has one over 700, so we'll try him over that. He's genuine enough, I'd say, so we'll give him a crack at that. So he'll be mixing between the flat and the jumps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our next race on the card was the feature race of the night, the Red Mills Cup Open 525. And in one, Tandy's Bridge. Trap two, vacant. In three, Kilgraney Prime. Four, Kerry O'Key. Five, Top Knack. Six is vacant also. Just four runners here now coming up behind the traps. Number one, the favourite, Tandy's Bridge is out reasonably well, but it's for Kerry O'Key, showing good early pace, leading to the corner, going clear into the bend, number four, Kerry O'Key, winner of the Red Mills champion on race here, into the far side, a length and a half in front of one, Tandy's Bridge in second, three is next, Kilgraney Prime, and five, top knack at the rear. Down into the third bend, and Tandy's Bridge is challenging. On the inside, Tandy's Bridge trying to get up the inside of four, Kerry O'Key, but Kerry O'Key resists him at this point, and as Kerry O'Key leads for home, number four, Kerry O'Key into the straight, number four, Kerry O'Key wins it from one, Tandy's Bridge. Bridge in second, so it's five from five for Kerry O'Key. The result of the Red Mills Cup Open 525. The winner, number four, Kerry O'Key, on by Patsy Byrne and Sean Burke. Second, number one, Tandy's Bridge. And third, number five, Top Knack, the time 28.99. Well, Kilkenny turning into be a very lucky track for Kerry O'Key. Trainer Shane Murphy, you must be pretty happy winning these prizes down here. Yeah, it was good. I didn't expect to be back this soon at all, to be honest. But uh, no, he ran well. I just saw it coming up and I said, geez, we'll step him up in class a bit, see how he fares out. And he did well. There was a few dogs missing in the race, all right. But he still, he showed us early again tonight and he did a job, thank God. It was a big move going up into open company from on race company, but he, he, he took it in his stride. Yeah, he did. Like, that's, you know, I just wanted to see how good he would be like when he comes up to this class, you know, and he just... He proved tonight that he could do it. Like he did a good enough time tonight as well. Like so, I'm happy, very happy. I know to be honest. What's the plan from here, Shane? <sighs> I don't know. To be honest, you'll have to sit down and think again. Talk to the owners. Is that Talk it? to the owners. The owners are a tough crowd. To be honest, <laughs> he just misses out on the puppy derby, doesn't he? Ah, he does. Yeah, but you know, we'll, there'll something come up for him, something that'll suit him. So we'll be, we'll keep our ears to the ground, as I say. If he keeps on winning, you'll be happy. Well, we'll be happy. We might come to Kilkenny again if something good comes up. <laughs> Just a reminder that next Saturday at Thurless Track, the DC for President Benefit Night takes place and Mullingar Track hosts a benefit night in aid of Ballina Cree Community Association and St Bridget's Football Club. There's a lot of action and entertainment promised at both venues. So next week we visit Harold's Cross for the semi-finals of the Vodafone Track Bookmakers Corn Cook Cullen 750. We'll have more highlights from both the Sporting Press Irish Oaks from Shelvin Park and the Kerry Agri Business Irish St Ledger from Limerick, along with the semi-finals of the William Hill English Derby. For a complete fixtures list and more information, log on to the Irish Greyhound website at www.igb.ie.